beginning with you, Secretary uh, Clinton. Finally, we tonight are on the stage together, Donald Trump and I. Uh, Donald, it's good to be with you. He also he also raised the issue of your emails. Do you want to respond to that? I do. You know, I made a mistake using a private email. That's for sure. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would obviously do it differently. Um, but I'm not going to make any excuses. It was a mistake. And I take responsibility for that. Mr. Trump. That was more than a mistake. That was done purposely. OK, that was not a mistake. That was done purposely. When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the Fifth so they're not prosecuted. When you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the fifth, I think it's disgraceful. And believe me, this country thinks it's disgraceful. It really thinks it's disgraceful also. As far as my tax returns, you don't learn that much from tax returns, that I can tell you. You learn a lot from financial disclosure. Uh, I understand that. You know, Donald uh, was very fortunate in his life, and that's all to his benefit. Uh, he started his business with $14 million borrowed from his father. And he really believes that the more you help wealthy people, the better off we'll be and that everything will work out from there. I don't buy that. You haven't done it in 30 years or 26 years. Well, any number I, you I've want been to a do. senator. You Donald, haven't done it. And you haven't I done have it. been a and secretary of state. And I have your done husband signed a NAFTA, lot. which was one of the worst things that ever happened well, to the manufacturing industry. That is your you go to New England, you go to Ohio, Pennsylvania, you go anywhere you want, Secretary Clinton, and you will see devastation where manufacturing is down 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere, but certainly ever signed in this country. And now you want to approve Trans-Pacific Partnership. You were totally in favor of it. Then you heard what I was saying, how bad it is. And you said, I can't win that debate. But you know that if you did win, you would approve that. And that will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Nothing will ever well, top NAFTA. I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. I also have a much better temperament than she has. You know, I have a much better. She spent, let me tell you, she spent hundreds of millions of dollars on an advertising, you know, they get Madison Avenue into a room, they put names, oh, temperament, let's go after. I think my strongest asset, maybe by far, is my temperament. I have a winning temperament. I know how to win. She does not have Secretary how to win. Clinton. Wait, the AFL-CIO the other day, <clears throat> behind the blue screen, I don't know who you were talking to, Secretary Clinton, but you were totally out of control. I said, there's a person with a temperament that's got a problem. Secretary Clinton. Whoa. OK. <laughs> the other day, I saw Donald saying that there were some Iranian sailors on a ship in the waters off of Iran, and they were taunting American sailors who were on a nearby ship. He said, you know, if they taunted our sailors, I'd blow them out of the water and start another war. That's that would not, not good judgment. War. That is not the right temperament to be commander in chief. The more we can invest in you, your education, your skills, your future, the better we will be off and the better we'll grow. That's the kind of economy I want us to see again. Now, in all fairness to uh, Secretary Clinton, yes, is that OK? Good. I want you to be very happy. It's very important to me. But in all fairness to Secretary Clinton, when she started talking about this, it was really very recently. She's been doing this for 30 years. And why hasn't she made the agreements better? The NAFTA agreement is defective just because of the tax and many other reasons, but just because of the fact. Let me interrupt just a moment. But Secretary Clinton and others, politicians, should have been doing this for years. Not right now because of the fact that we've created a movement. They should have been doing this for years. Your regulations are a disaster and you're going to increase regulations all over the place. And by the way, Two and a half trillion. I happen to think it's double that. It's probably five trillion dollars that we can't bring into our country, Lester. And with a little leadership, you'd get it in here very quickly. And it could be put to use on the inner cities and lots of other things. And it would be beautiful. But we have no leadership. And honestly, that starts with Secretary Clinton. All right. You have two minutes on the same question to defend tax increases on the wealthiest American secretary, Clinton. I, I have a feeling that by the end of this evening, I'm going to be blamed for everything that's ever happened. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? 
jo- you know, just 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 join uh, join the debate by uh, saying more crazy things. Now, let me say, hey, there's nothing crazy about not letting our companies case. bring their money it, back into okay, their this country. Is, this is uh, Secretary Clinton's two minutes, yes. please. Yeah, well, let's start the clock again, Lester. Look at her website. You know what? It's no different than this. She's telling us how to fight ISIS. Just go to her website. She tells you how to fight ISIS on her website. I don't think General Douglas MacArthur would like that too much. The next next segment, we're continuing the subject. Well, at least I have a plan to fight ISIS. No, no. You're telling the enemy everything you want to do. No, we're not. See, you're telling the enemy everything you want to do. No wonder you've been fighting. No wonder you've been fighting ISIS your entire adult life. Folks, well, that, that's me, a that's let, go to the please the fact checkers get folks, to work. Yeah, you called it the gold uh, standard. About, well, I hope, you called I, it the gold standard of trade deals. You, you know said what? it's the finest deal you've ever seen. No, and then you heard what I said about it, and all of a sudden you were against it. Well, Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not <laughs> the facts. The facts are, I did say I hoped it would be a good deal, but when it was negotiated, not. which I was not responsible for. The African-American community has been let down by our politicians. They talk good around election time, like right now. And after the election, they said, see you later. I'll see you in four years. The African-American community, look, the community within the inner cities has been so badly treated. They've been abused and used in order to get votes by Democrat politicians because that's what it is. They've controlled these communities right. for up to 100 years. Mr. Trump, let me... Well, unbroken. I, I, I and, and I will tell you, you look at the inner cities, and I just left Detroit, and I just left Philadelphia, and I just, you know, you've seen me. I've been all over the place. Uh, you decided to stay home, and that's okay. But I will tell you, I've been all over, and I've met some of the greatest people I'll ever meet within these communities. And they are very, very upset with what their politicians have told them and what their politicians have done. I I think I think that I think Donald just criticized me for preparing for this debate. And yes, I did. And you know what else I prepared for? I prepared to be president. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. She's saying Russia, 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 but I don't, maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? You don't know who broke in to DNC, but what did we learn with DNC? We learned that Bernie Sanders was taken advantage of by your people, by Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Look what happened to her. But Bernie Sanders was taken advantage of. That's what we lose. Now, whether that was Russia, whether that was China, whether it was another country, we don't know. Because the truth is, under President Obama, we've lost control of things that we used to have control over. We came in with the Internet. We came up with the Internet. And I think Secretary Clinton and myself would agree very much when you look at what ISIS is doing with the Internet. They're beating us at our own game. ISIS. So we have to get very, very tough on cyber and cyber warfare. Uh, it, is a, it is a huge problem. I have a son. He's 10 years old. He has computers. He is so good with these computers. It's unbelievable. The security aspect of cyber is very, very tough. And maybe it's, it's hardly doable. But I will say we are not doing the job we should be doing. But that's true throughout our whole governmental society. We have so many things that we have to do better, Lester, and certainly cyber is one of them. Clinton became the first woman nominated for president by a major party. Earlier this month, you said she doesn't have, quote, a presidential look. She's standing here right now. What did you mean by that? Uh, She doesn't have the look. She doesn't have the stamina. I said she doesn't have the stamina. And I don't believe she does have the stamina to be president of this country. You need tremendous stamina. The quote was, you I have, just don't think wait, she has wait a Wait a minute, unless you ask me a question. Did you ask me a question? You have to be able to negotiate our trade deals. You have to be able to negotiate, that's right, with Japan, with Saudi Arabia. I mean, can you imagine we're defending Saudi Arabia and with all of the money they have, we're defending them and they're not paying. All you have to do is speak to them. Wait, you have so many different things you have to be able to do. And I don't believe that Hillary has the stamina. Let's let her respond. Well, as soon as he travels to 112 countries and negotiates 
a peace deal, a ceasefire, a release of dissidents, an opening of new uh, opportunities in nations around the world, or even spends 11 hours testifying in front of uh, a congressional committee. He can talk to me about stamina. The world, <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, Hillary has experience, but it's bad experience. We have made so many bad deals during the last... So she's got experience, that I agree, but it's bad, bad experience. Whether it's the Iran deal that you're so in love with, where we gave them $150 billion back, whether it's the Iran deal, whether it's uh, anything you can... Name, you almost can't name a good deal. I agree. She's got experience, but it's bad experience. And this country can't afford to have another four years of that kind of experience. We are at the... But you want to know the truth? I was going to say something Please, extremely rough to Hillary, to her family. And I said to myself, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's inappropriate. It's not nice. But she spent hundreds of millions of dollars on negative ads on me, many of which are absolutely untrue. They're untrue and they're misrepresentations. And I will tell you this, Lester, it's not nice and I don't, I, I, I don't deserve that. But it's certainly not a nice thing that she's done. It's hundreds of millions of ads. And the only gratifying thing is I saw the polls come in today. And with all of that money, we over $200 million dollars is spent. And I'm either winning or tied. One and I've you, spent practically nothing. One of you. And the first presidential debate.